So now, next up directly is John. He's going to talk about, and I'm sorry to steal your th joke, but like, it's such a good joke. He's going to talk about tackling the design system. All right, hi guys. My name's John Kerwin. I'm a product designer at Thumbtack. Uh, for the past two years, I've been working on our design systems team. And today, I'm going to take you through a little bit about how we build our system, how we build our team. And if you're looking to build a team or a system around design systems, I can help you out, provide some insights here. So our system is called Thumbprint. Uh, like I mentioned, we've been working on it for about two years. It's gotten to a point where it's an integral part of our design process and our product teams, and we couldn't be more proud about it, or proud of it. But it wasn't always this way. Back in 2017, when I joined Thumbtack, we had a rudimentary design system called Primo. It was anything but Primo. Uh, it was basically a bunch of designers agreeing to use a hex color, uh, Avenir, and then working from uh, Drive and Sketch, uh, sharing Sketch files across Slack, and working from legacy Sketch files that contributed to a bunch of tech debt and uh, personal uh, opinions around patterns that we didn't want to promote throughout the product. So Primo had a bunch of problems. Uh, there was no source of truth. Designers couldn't find uh, a good pattern or a good guideline to stick with. They kind of just assumed what had been done before on the flow or on their team, or maybe, hey, this was a bright, shiny thing over here, and they would pull that in. Developer handoff was a bit of an issue. Uh, designers and developers would, weren't speaking the same language. Designers would hand something off that kind of felt like it was a part of the system, and developers would soon find out that it would actually blow the scope uh, for just simple things. Contributed to a ton of tech debt, uh, which I'll get to a little bit more, and ultimately uh, contributed to a poor user experience. So we decided to build a design systems team. Uh, Dan and Tom here are in the audience. Say hi to them. They're awesome people. Uh, and the four of us were tasked with establishing the guidelines and the patterns that would help us get to a better user experience at Thumbtack. We were also going through rebranding at the time. So we were looking six, seven months out. Uh, we had a bit of an issue where, where do we start? Uh, sometimes building product can look like this. You know, where do we insert ourselves? Do we think seven, six, seven months out uh, and not really prove ourselves in the meantime, or do we start today fixing things, only knowing that we're going to have to fix them later on? Do we start small? Do we do everything first? We talked a lot about these issues and found a good way through them. And of course, it's to start with your foundations. You want to start with your foundations. For us, this was grid, color, typography, uh, icons, etc. And you want to slowly work up through the complexity. You don't want to go too fast. You want to start slow, just like you're building product. And sometimes ripping up the floorboards can be really messy. Uh, I'm so glad I get to use this slide. It's one of my favorites. Uh, she's so happy. Uh, and for us, it was like this. We had 821 separate instances of space. So developers were inputting manual space all over our product. And you could see from page to page inconsistencies in spacing. Things would just kind of jump around. Through establishing a better system uh, through Thumbprint, we were able to get that number down to eight. For icons, we went from 530 down to 152. Color and type. So we would audit the system, see where the mess was, and think about a better system, uh, bringing in designers and developers, and try to find a better way through the process. And you'll find that this will snowball over time. Uh, you'll set something out, and developers will, will smell it. They'll be like, oh, wait, maybe I could use Thumbprint for this. Maybe I could use Thumbprint and save some time over here. Uh, designers would say, hey, I think that's a little bit easier to use. Uh, let me use that guideline and that pattern and tell other people about it. So you'll find that if you start with your foundations, start small, and communicate what they are, you'll find that these will snowball over time. Also, a big important thing uh, Trisha was just talking about, it's hard to quantify design systems work. Uh, we do this in a, in a cool way at Thumbtack. We send out a design and engineering survey twice a year to our product team. This gives us a good way to track sentiment, track what's working, what's not working. Designers and developers can put in component requests. Uh, hey, I'd really like some attention uh, on this pattern or guideline. It gives us a really good way to, to gauge things. And sometimes designers will just comment, duh, on things, which is also super helpful, too. I see it right there. There it is. Uh, so, so through tracking sentiment, uh, when we made the switch over to Figma from our abstract and sketch stack, we were able to quantify that switching to sketch on our team uh, raised sentiment 20%, which is a really cool thing to, 
to go through that whole process of migration and say, this is actually a really good move that we made. And this ultimately benefits in foundational components, uh, better tooling creates better team collaboration, creates a culture where people want to contribute to your design system and your team because you're helping them help you and vice versa. So we think about building components, um, but we found that we were ultimately building trust. Uh, you can set something out and hope people use it, but if you don't set up those relationships between um, your cross-functional teams, you won't get as far as you think you're going to get. And after a year of work with Thumbprint um, on the web, we had found that our iOS and Android engineers were getting a little bit jealous because things were a little bit easier to use on the web for Thumbprint. So we set out to gain parity on our platforms. There was only one big problem. We had no dedicated native engineers. Uh, so we had this problem where we were turning into a native first company. Uh, we wanted to really support native first from the design system but we had no resources to do that. So we decided to get everybody in a room. Uh, stakeholders didn't know about it at first. We were just like, let's set up a weekly meeting where iOS, Android, design systems, people, uh, web developers, uh, designers, PMs, anybody who wanted could get into this room. We could talk about what happened the week prior, what's coming down the road, uh, things that we wanted to just agree on, and then we could leave that meeting and at least have established um, some source of truth. And over time, we found that people wanted to contribute to the system. They would say, hey, I know I'm working on this project, but I could give you a little bit of time and build this little component for you. And that snowballed um, into, we shipped, I think, 40 component sections uh, over the course of the year. Uh, now we have uh, the problem where the web people are like, you haven't given us any attention in a year. So we find ourselves in a good position of finding parity after a year of just asking people for some help. And pulling everyone's separate strengths together has really benefited our, benefited our design system. We think about our design system as a product. Uh, and we think about our designers and developers that are around us as our users. This helps us to understand the design process better for design system components and audits. Uh, and it also pulls people's strengths together um, and makes a better system. We also like to take opportunities to, be, uh, to have fun with our communications. Something that I personally like to do is send out release emails every time we have something to release inside of Figma. Uh, I'm a big fan of using GIFFOX uh, to create GIFs to kind of pull designers and developers into the process of how to use something, how a particular component stretches and collapses. Uh, so I find that GIFs are really helpful to use in communicating to your team. And like I said, you want to bring your coworkers into the process. Be radically open to their feedback. If something's not working for them, it's not going to work for you. This will ultimately create that culture of collaboration where your designers are going to say, hey, this particular component isn't in thumbprint. Could I do some work and help you like, get it across the line? Uh, the answer to that is absolutely. So you create this culture where people want to contribute, and you're helping to contribute to their success as well. So where we're at now, we've got this culture of collaboration that feels really good. Uh, there's no real uh, dramatic tension around handoff. People understand what to do with the design system. We've got a set of robust components and documentation at thumbprint.design. Uh, we support the design process inside of Figma with layout, scaffolding, and things to keep designers in the right track. And ultimately, we're seen as partners in this process that they want to collaborate with. Where we're going in the future, we're looking to open source our native library, which is something that only a couple companies have done at this point. We're making internal and external Figma plugins we're excited to release later this year. We're working on stronger native documentation on thumbprint.design. And we're working on a thumbprint email system. Uh, thanks to the benefits of auto layout, it's this really cool drag and drop situation that we're building right now. And it's because we followed these simple rules that allowed us to build a really cool design system in two years. So I hope you can take this back to your teams and build something great. Thank you.